Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it no fear because that's exactly what this market is telling us. When you look at what's happened in January with the meme stocks having a resurgence again, Bitcoin up big. Uh, boy, we're going to look at uh, several of our indicators and they're going to tell you uh, that same message. Today, we're going to focus on the S&P 500, several indicators, and wrap it up by taking a look at Apple and Amazon, which have earnings on Thursday. There is a lot of earnings coming out this week. And then on top of that, we have the Fed meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday with the announcement on Wednesday and Chair Powell's press conference on Wednesday afternoon. Okay, let's start off here with the indices. Okay, we've got a side-by-side -side view of the Dow Industrials, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. So the Dow was up 602 points this week, the S&P 98 points, and the NASDAQ 100, 547 points. So we've had a heck of a bounce here in the NASDAQ 100. It has been up for four weeks in a row. The S&P 500 has only been up one week. The Dow's only, well, it's been up three out of four weeks. And then the, the Dow has uh, only had one week. Uh, in here where it was up. But again, I guess if you come back and look at this, you'd probably say three out of four weeks too. I think the thing on the Dow that I was uh, disappointed in, but again, you got you to gotta look at this. Every time you think we're getting set for a down break, because like we, last time we closed below the low the prior week, we didn't get any follow through. We never took out the low of that week. So here we are, we're sitting with an inside up candle and we'll see if we get any kind of breakdown this week. You know, you just kind of feel like the tension's building a little bit. All right, let's take a look at the S&P. Okay, here's the S&P 500, the SPX daily and weekly. We just looked at this weekly view and the, it was up 10 points on, uh, on Friday. So when we take a look at the Elliott Wave picture, it really hasn't changed. I still think that Intermediate Wave 1 finished in June. We had an intermediate wave two high in August, and that we have started working our way down within intermediate wave two, looking for the next five waves as a part of that wave structure. Now, one thing I just want to comment on in here, okay? When you look at Elliott waves, you know, the, the classic is, you know, five, three, five kind of thing for a corrective pattern. But the, the thing that you have to remember is five waves always tells you the primary direction that you're heading in. Now, so when I look at this, I say, well, you know, we've had five waves down from the August or from the January high into the June low. And so to me, this is the direction we're heading in. And right now what we're dealing with is counter trend. Either the counter trend is complete here or something still is getting a little bit messier over here with, with minor wave two. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I believe that the overall direction is still heading south and that we are dealing with uh, corrective activity right now. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the daily. And let me zoom in a little bit. Let me move the weekly out of the way. So here's what we're dealing with. The December 13th high I've got labeled as minor wave two in the move down. And so now we've got minute wave one and minute wave two. Now, what's, what's the thing that's unsettling? This is very, very deep in terms of how this is corrected. And, you know, it, we've almost retraced and took out that high on Friday. So if we continue to push higher and take out that December 13th high, then yes, this becomes invalid. And it means that wave two is really doing something still, still evolving like this pattern right down here. And, that, and it would morph into a WXY, more complex corrective zigzag pattern, a combined zigzag of a WXY. That's what I think will happen if we continue to push up and take out this high. But there's still a chance that that doesn't occur. Let's take a look at the intraday. Let's just look at the 130 minute. Okay. And so here's the picture. Here's what happened on Friday. Here's on a 130 minute, it divides the day into three equal bars. 
So the last third of the day kind of got a little bit of a reversal candle. Now, most of that, if not all of that reversal came in the last 30 minutes of the day. They really hammered it pretty well. It came down and it closed below the trading of the previous three hours, I think, something like that. So we'll see. Do we get any kind of continuation on that? Do we continue to break down? You can't get too excited with any, you know, like, uh, resumption of a uh, third minor wave until at least we come down here and close below 39.49. So we'll see what happens. Now, we've got the same wave count and the same picture uh, on the SPY. So let's just look at the SPY's numbers in here. So here's where we're sitting with SPY. Let me space this out a little bit. So it's the same thing. You know, we're, the key level is the December 13th high. And then we've got the counter trend move in here, which looks like a WXY right now. And it, again, it's been very, very deep. The high on Friday was 408.16. The high over here is 410.49. So that's the key level we're watching. Do we get a continuation down here, take out this trend line, close below this level right here, which is 387.46? Or do we push higher and take out this high? And then we've got more complex, uh, you know, that, that's still evolving in here. So we'll see. You know, those are the two scenarios I've got short term. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's take a look at uh, a few of our indicators. Okay, starting off with the VIX. It was down 22 cents on Friday, and we're sitting at 1851. We're back down into the territory of where we were at the beginning of this bear market back in January. Now, granted, the, and I'm talking about the bear market on, in the S&P 500, okay, because the NASDAQ peaked in November, as did the Russell 2000. So the Dow and the S&P peaked in January. So, you know, here we are. No fear, really. I mean, this is fear. But is, is, that, is that really fear like the end of a bear market? I don't think so. I mean, if we take a look at a longer term view, this is real fear. Here's fear in 2008 into 2009. Here's fear in March of 2020. And so we've had a bear market. And where did the bear market begin? Well, let's see. Let's go to January of 2022. Right in here. So our bear market has had a whopping this activity right here on, uh, let me color code it a little bit for you, red. That's, that's the VIX activity of this bear market so far. And, and, and just, I mean, just looking at this, I don't think we're even close to being finished with this bear market. So we'll see what happens. But where are we sitting short term? Right now we're sitting like this. This almost looks like a little bit of a declining wedge type pattern to me. So it's going to be really interesting to see how much further do we squeeze out into here? Or then do, you know, watching for a break to the upside, getting back above the 20 level, breaking out of this wedgy type pattern. All right, let's take a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Now, where are we sitting here with the McClellan Oscillator? I like to look at this in terms of kind of market tension. Now, I apologize for this being so squeezed out to the right. I struggle with this uh, spreadsheet. With the, This is an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, that I originally got, I believe, from the McClellan folks. And, uh, and so, you know, this chart pattern, I just uh, struggle with getting this chart. I need more margin over here to the right on this chart pattern. But here's where we're sitting. When you get above plus 150, you're extremely overbought. And below minus 150, you're extremely oversold. So we're sitting here at a plus 156, I think, 156, 157, something like that. Let me, let me double check that. Yeah, we're sitting at a plus 157. But the key thing is we've got divergence showing up. Okay, so from this high right here, let's see if I can get this to give it to me. Uh, there we go, January 12th. The, the S&P 500 has done nothing but chop its way higher. And this has not confirmed that. 
similar to what happened back over here in October and in November and in August. From the end of July into this little peak right here. Yeah, come on, show it to me. Which I think was around August 12th, something like that. It's showing me July 29th. Yeah, it's not cooperating, but it was like August 12th. And the market peaked around August 25th. So we had significant divergence that showed up in here. And we're getting the same thing right now. So we're starting to see some things on several indicators. Um, and speaking of the, you know, the McClellan oscillator, and that's based on a lot of breath activity, um, I saw this post uh, by uh, Helene Meisler, and uh, she's talking about how the 20-day moving average of New York Stock Exchange volume has fallen off a cliff in January. I find that really, really interesting. Uh, so uh, we'll see where we go from here, but that's, a, that's quite a sign of weakness with the market rising like it did in the month of January. And then when we take a look at the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average, let's look at the uh, S&P 500. Now, yeah, we've come down from an extreme, the extreme that we we're at in November, where we were in August, the August peak. Okay, so we're sitting at 72.76. Now, it's interesting on the S&P 500, the extremes are above 90 is where we, got, we stretched to. But when you look at the New York Stock Exchange, the peaks are above 80. And here's August, here's November, or de beginning of December. And here's where we are right here again. We're right up in here in this very stretched territory on the New York Stock Exchange. So we've been here for what, man, two or three days now. Went, went up, pulled back, went back up again. So I, the, the whole point is, yeah, we're starting to see some various indicators that are saying we're kind of at extreme limits. Uh, limits that in the past have shown some uh, peaks, okay, in the market. So we'll see if we get that kind of follow through. All right, let's take a look at Apple and Amazon. Okay, let's start off with the weekly view of Apple. Apple was up $8.06. And actually, I just realized something. I need to get rid of something here. Clean that up a little bit. So I think the key things that jump out at me when you think about the the you know the Fang stocks and some of the big boys, uh, Apple is the one that's held up the strongest so far. Anyway, I mean it's it's clearly in a downtrend. You know from you know the January high up in here, it's been you know chopping its way down. It's above its 20-week moving average. And it's well off the March 2020 low, which is something I've been looking at in all of those because several of them are down below and, and some of them are a lot closer. Uh, so that's where we're kind of sitting on the weekly view. And But when I look at the daily over here, here's what jumps out at me. We had this consolidation, a lot of chopping going on here over the last several months since the October high. And look at this consolidation. And then I kind of pegged a line right through the middle of this consolidation at 145. And I thought, okay, Apple did close above it. We'll see if we get any kind of continuation with that because this looks to me like we ought to have key resistance in here. This should provide a bunch of resistance to Apple. We'll see if we get it. I mean, if this continues to push higher, then I mean, you'll pick your, pick your levels in terms of where it could get further resistance. But we have multiple peaks in here. The strongest one is up here all the way where, you know, 157 or so. But right now, I think the challenging thing is going to be, you know, how does it react this week? And I would say it just looks like we got the possibility of getting just a ton of resistance in this level, in this area. Okay, let's take a look at Amazon. Okay, here's the picture on Amazon. It was up almost $5 for this last week. So we've had a pretty strong little, again, four-week move coming off that low the week of December 25th. So pretty strong move uh, in here. The key thing is look how this came all the way down, you know, to the March 2020 low, which was 81.30. And uh, the lows in here, 81.69. 81.43. It's almost like everybody was watching that level. 
as they come down in here. And then the buying came in at the March 2020 lows. So now we're getting a little bit of a bounce in here. Now look how far below the 20 week moving average we are uh, as compared to Apple. You know, I mean, Apple hasn't even broken below the 20 week moving average. Uh, and, you know, here we are with the uh, with Amazon. So let's take a look at the daily and see what we've got short term. You know, we're slightly overbought. You know, we're, we're at this point we're at 73. And again, I use a 10 bar RSI. I just like it better. So we're getting divergence between this high here on January 13th and the high we got right here. OK, kind of. It's interesting, there's that divergence that's showing up on the McClellan Oscillator from mid-January to where we are now. And the high that occurred on Friday was 103.49. The high that we got over here on November 14th is 103.79. So kind of a key resistance area. We'll see whether or not it can, it can even punch through there. Let me zoom in a little bit better. And, but if it were to close above that and continue to push higher, I would say the next target is closing this gap that occurred. And the close here is 110.96. So we'll see whether or not it's got enough strength to do that or not. But that's the picture on Amazon. Uh, yeah, we could be in a counter trendish type of bounce, but uh, we'll see what, uh, how it plays out this week by the end of this week. OK, that's where we sit with Apple and Amazon and where we sit with the S&P 500 and a couple of the indicators. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, daily basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website. Check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. It's going to be uh, an exciting week.